Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Eurovision interview here on the channel. I am extremely excited as the ESC United resident Portugal fan. We are here with Mauro. How are you doing today? I'm good. I kind of just woke up. <laughs> so great to start the day. I mean, if it makes you feel better, uh, I also probably woke up about an hour ago. It's almost 5 a.m. here in the States, so uh, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry oh my god yeah no here it's late it's like almost 12 p.m <laughs> that's okay i do this for uh i mean obviously for for your interview i would have gotten up at three i'm so excited but uh i I'm mean sure. after i think this is what i think day three of me being up this early so really i just it's just natural you're point. getting used to it are you going to bed at like 7 p.m I am. And it's it's really messed up my sleep schedule, I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, no. Well, thank you for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And I know, uh, so you, we watched uh, your second uh, rehearsal, uh, it was two days ago. Um, and I know that obviously some things had to shift and, and some things like that. But how do you feel like rehearsals are going for you? Uh, you know, the, the, the first one, we were kind of, first time, so we're kind of getting used to all of it. And uh, we weren't very happy about the the camera situation, like like all the plans and and sound wise was also kind of not there. Um, but then they were awesome because you know all the notes we had and everything for second rehearsal it was pretty much on point. It was suddenly the sound was perfect. We didn't really change anything and and camera wise it, it was much better too. So um, I, I mean we're we're really happy of the result like. With, with the results from, from the second rehearsal. And now we'll see, you know, it's, hopefully it'll be better and better and better. <laughs> yeah, well, and I can tell you, at least from our uh, stream that, that we've been doing, I mean, you had a very positive reaction uh, from, yeah. both, from both all of us on camera. Um, and then also when the clip came up, everyone was like talking about it in our chat of, of, the, of things like that. And so um, I, think, I think you will be surprised when you see it uh, kind of back. You, you and, and, and RTP did a pretty good job. I, again, I'm the Portugal stand, so I mean, I would love anything, but I am very me. excited. Um, and I wanted to ask, so I know that you have been doing uh, all of your Eurovision prep while you've also been on tour. Uh, you've been touring <laughs> uh, with, with Charlotte Cardin. What has it been like to be touring and opening for an artist whilst also preparing for Eurovision on the side? Well, maybe I shouldn't be admitting this, but I, I think there was not much preparation while I was on tour, you know, so I was kind of like, and, and the Portuguese team was awesome about it because they're like, no, go do your tour and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure out and we'll kill it once you're back. So I, I really, I, I went on tour and I kind of focused on tour because, you know, it's like, you have a show today here, then the show tomorrow in some other country, and then tomorrow the day after in some other country. So um, I, I kind of just focused on that for three weeks. Whatever was necessary for your vision, I would kind of, you know, send some stuff or do some interviews or something. But really, I, I was more focused on the tour. And it was kind of like we made a deal that, okay, when you come back, we'll we'll hit it uh, like 200%. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a, like, a ride, you know, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And and specifically thinking about uh, Eurovision, is this something that's kind of been on your radar for a while? Like, have you been wanting to do this? Or was it kind of like a coincidental moment of you went to Festival de Quinsau, you won, and you're like, okay, I, I signed up for this. Let's go. Yeah, it was it was very much like closer to the second thing you said. Um, I, I, you know, I've, I've had some opportunities in the past and I was always kind of like, oh, maybe not my thing, maybe not for me, but it's awesome because I've always watched it and it's, you know, kind of like kept uh, update, kept myself updated onto what's happening with Stival and with the Eurovision, but it was never really like, I, it was always kind of like definitely not my thing. That's what I used to say. And then this year I did Festival because I'm, I'm about to release my album and, you know, I have so much music coming out and I thought, well, no one really knows my work in Portugal, which is my country. So I'm going to do this festival, you know, people will at least hear about me and then obviously someone else who is going to win and go to revision and I'm, I'm doing just this kind of like Portugal um, stage of it. Um, and well, surprisingly, I won. So the Eurovision was for sure like, oh my God, now I'm, I'm here. 
but then also the best surprise I think was to realize when I did the, the festival like from back home that uh, it's actually not even though it's a competition and TV and all these things that for me were kind of like oh, maybe not it's it's incredibly surprising to just get there and realize that the whole team is actually up for just showcasing good music and and not for some like drama tv show you know and like competition and, all. and and that was awesome so actually from from day one since the the festival started i i i shifted like how i was actually like oh this is this is actually awesome this is super awesome so it's been just a i don't know just like a really really nice surprise to see how everything has been uh rolling out i guess i don't know how you say it that way but yeah yeah yeah, well, and, and speaking also of, of Festival de Cancel, I know that you uh, made the decision, you brought three of the backing vocalists that you had uh, yeah. for the competition, but then you also brought yeah. uh, Diana and Milhana, uh, also from Festival de Cancel, who were competing against you. Um, when you won the national final, was that when that idea kind of started? Or how did you decide, like, hey, I want to bring these two with me to Turin? Uh, I, I mean... For me, the dream, if, you know, w with winning and all the dream would be to bring everybody from the festival from that was, that was always kind of such a, a really cool idea in my head, kind of like, it would be awesome. We just go push over with everybody from, from the festival, but we can't, so we can only be six. And so Diana and Milenes were kind of like two people that from day one were really supportive and, and loving, you know, like towards the, the, the song and, and and myself and it was just you know even on backstage kind of like the hang just naturally formed <laughs> it's a, like gut form and so it it just made sense you know when when it came to, to the moment of choosing like okay I still want to bring somebody because I that's a thing that I'd love to do it just made sense that the two of them uh would come they're kind of like well they both have to to come for for sure and, and we had the space you know like so yeah all right all righty and and speci speaking specifically of your song uh so i know that saudade saudade has a very personal meaning for you uh, about uh your grandfather who is no longer with us um but i know that a lot of our listeners don't necessarily speak native portuguese so they maybe don't know the whole kind of message of the song and the lyrics so what yeah. can you what can you kind of tell us about the the message of the song what the lyrics are about what should they know about it well on second verse i say sorry on second verse i i basically i say that uh there's so much I carry with me and that, you know, he was my safe space and I, I, I really like truly lost my best friend. That's kind of how I, like what I'm saying in second verse. And then I also say um, that at this point, I kind of just, I like ask for signs of some sort and kind of like, there's only really one word left to say, which is so that, and it's, yeah, it just kind of, it's, it's all about that, about how it's, there's like a, a loss that I kind of can't, get over and uh it's like a, a present feeling just this like so that which is when you when you miss something right you have so that um and you know it's talking like from myself and and for for my whole family too you know we, we all we're all kind of like like so much so that of 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 omari which was my my granddad gotcha well thank you for sharing a little bit more of that personal uh message behind this song um, of course I was uh, a little curious to ask you as well. So I know that you are pretty good friends with the former uh, Eurovision winner, Salvador, Salvador Sobral uh, from yeah. 2017. Uh, and I'm not gonna ask you about your relationship or anything like that, but I was curious, has he offered you any advice about Eurovision or the process or what to expect? Yeah, I mean, in the end, it was such a different experience for him, right? Because he was in such a, a hard time of his life too. You know, he was mm -hmm. really sick and it's like too much. And it was just him by himself. It's like, I'm doing this with six friends, with five friends. It's it's a different experience. So I, I know that for him, it was, uh, you know, a lot and, and a bit overwhelming even. But in the times we talked about it, it's kind of like, man, get ready, get ready. But at the same time, it's always kind of like this, like in, enjoy, you know, I and 
exactly. I think I think it's a bit different for me, and it would probably be easier to not find it as like wow. But um, at the end of the day, like he he just kind of like just enjoy. <laughs> it's a wild ride. That's true, and it's one of those things. I mean, not to say that it only happens once, but I think that first Eurovision experience only happens once. Um, oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. you could possibly be like Valentina Moneta and come back, you know, three or four times, but that would be your choice. Uh <laughs> I think this is my. I think that's why we're all in, like, like really, really, really enjoying every bit of it. Is because I'm sure that most of like the group, so the the six of us, is probably not gonna do another Eurovision it's such a special moment in time you know it's like it's this one chapter from our lives that we're gonna look back in 20 years and be like oh remember da, 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 da. <laughs> so um yeah it's I, I don't think I'll come back like two or three four times but we'll see who knows who knows if the Portuguese now, delegation can't find any other musician in the next years and they come beg me like Mara please maybe I'll think about it <laughs> Well, but Portugal did... is cool. We have a lot of good musicians, so oh. I'm sure I'm sure we're always gonna have some some great stuff to to send to Riven. Oh yes, yes. And that national final is usually packed full of good, yeah, yeah, good yeah. quality content. So yeah, I was um, lucky. I was lucky. I want to ask you. This is one of my uh, favorite questions. I actually haven't been able to ask this question yet. So you're the first one to oh. get this one. So <laughs> if you were going to like, so if the EBU came to you and said, "Maro, we need for you to make a cover." of a Eurovision 2022 song, but you get to pick it. You get to figure out which one you want to do. Whose song gotcha. are you going to cover and why? Well, I, I mean, I love I love them all. Maybe the first one would be the, the Grease song. Um, just because, first of all, I love singing it. It's so nice to sing, like even physically, it just feels nice to sing it. And then because uh, Amanda's the sweetest, we've met her, she's, she's truly awesome. And yesterday we saw her rehearsal, it was like, well, two days ago, was her rehearsal was just right before ours. And so just seeing it, it, it kind of like the, the song stayed in my head for the rest of that day. So maybe start with that one, but there's so many good ones. Like, I don't know, it's really like cool to look at the 39 other other songs and be like, oh, that's, I could really, I could cover them all. I could cover them all. <laughs> maybe a Eurovision yeah, cover album is out there in the future then. Do not give me ideas, I'll do, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> now I know that you do have that kind of a special special relationship with Amanda there. Uh, would you say that Greece is possibly going to receive your twelve points this year, or are there other contenders? I don't know. I mean, my points as in like Portugal. No, like your personal points. Morrow's twelve points this year. Ah. Oh, that's that's the hard one because that's exactly that's where I'm kind of like. Well, it's there. So many different amazing songs that uh this is my portuguese delegation you see they're out making music music <laughs> <laughs> all this noise being super professional <laughs> it's it's my it's my rtp mama um no i it's it's hard it's hard i maybe i can respond to that after the competition because i also don't want to influence anybody you know i think music is music and at the end of the day like each person kind of I'm sure there's some songs that might make more sense to me, but at the same time, they're all so cool in different ways. Like really, like, I don't know. Even like like the, before that wolf eats my grandma, like I, even that's, <laughs> it's, like, it's so good. It's, there's so much good music. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so okay. I, yeah. Maybe after the, the Eurovision, I'll be like, okay, maybe I would have given my top points too. But for now, Fair I'm kind of just gonna leave it. We'll yeah, see. so we'll so we'll tweet you after the grand final, and you'll just have to respond to us with who the twelve points goes to. I, I, I'll do that Perfect. one. <laughs> Perfect, that's the deal. All righty. Well, Maro, I want to be uh, mindful of your time. I know that you have a pretty long day, a pretty long week next week as well ahead of you. So, um, again, from the resident Portugal stan of ESC United, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, for those who are watching or are listening, make sure that you go and subscribe to uh, Maro or follow on Spotify, iTunes, social media, all that stuff. Uh, make sure that you're following us as well. Hit that notification bell, the like button, subscribe, all of that jazz. Um, and then make sure that you tune in for our next Eurovision interview interviews because we've got a lot of them coming down the pipeline and I'm super jazzed for who we have coming up next week. So until then though, we're gonna leave you with a good old goodbye. Bye.